I'm going to have to explain the statute of limitations. Look, every, every single crime in every single jurisdiction, every statute has a certain amount of time in which you must bring the case. If you don't bring the case within that particular time, then you lose the ability to bring that case. Um, Joseph Marino now joins us, former federal prosecutor. Joseph Marino, thank you for joining me. Um, your thoughts on the news that an indictment has just, uh, at least it's been reported. We, it has not been unsealed. We don't know for sure, but you're a former federal prosecutor for the Eastern District of Virginia. Tell me, um, the, the issue of statute of limitations on this case, why is that so critical in this particular prosecution? Right. It, it, the problem, based on what we know, is that this case seems barred, right? One, because if it were just a misdemeanor, right, just the bookkeeping case, it's two years. If it can be coupled with the cover-up of a separate, presumably federal crime, which is itself a problem, you get five years. But based on what we know, the bookkeeping entry and the transaction at issue here happened in October of 2016, just weeks before the presidential election that year. By my count, that's seven years nearly. So there has to be some argument for why the five-year statute of limitations should be what we call told in this case to allow a case that's nearly seven years old to be prosecuted. Um, that's a big problem. Now, I can kind of guess what the prosecutor's office would argue. I've got two theories about what they could argue. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's anyone's guess until we actually start getting some real facts here. So what are your two guesses? Because that's where we are right now, because this is apparently, first we're guessing that the New York Times is right. Then we, and if right. they are right, it's sealed anyway. We don't know what it is. So the first would be that based on, again, what we think we know, Michael Cohen made this payment of $130,000 to Miss Clifford's, right, Stormy Daniels, and then was reimbursed by the Trump organization over a number of months. And it's been speculated those reimbursements went into 2018. Then, so if you take five years from 2018, now we get into 2023, that could be one explanation why the five-year statute of limitations is still hasn't, you know, hasn't basically been violated and we're still within that time period. That's one theory. Another theory is that you can argue under New York state law that the person who is to be indicted, in this case, Donald Trump, was living outside the state and was not locatable. That's a real stretch, right? I mean, because we knew exactly where he was. He was in a resident of Florida. He was living in the White House while he was president. But that's another theory that you could try to argue. Both of them seem like a stretch to me. And so I think the, the DA's office is going to have its hands full. Donald Trump has some extremely talented defense lawyers right now, and they're going to be all over this point. Well, okay, this living outside the state, I don't know how you get past that one. I mean, look, he, everyone knows where he's been. I mean, it's no big secret. We've got, we, in fact, we've got Secret Service assigned to him. I mean, there's no, he's not sneaking around any place. The issue about the reimbursements that somehow go into the year 2018, if there is a series of reimbursements, it seems to me, and this is, again, you know, just guessing, but it'd be like two lawyers were sitting in a bar talking about this. I would ask, you know, we would be talking about... Each payment, each reimbursement, would that be a separate crime? I mean, I, I think that's, that would be the theory, all right, I imagine, right? It would have to be, you have to say, it wasn't just the books and records entry, which I believe was in calendar year 2016. It stretched into multiple accounting entries that purportedly false, falsely uh, claimed they were reimbursements for legal services by Mr. Cohen to Mr. Trump, when in fact they were reimbursing Michael Cohen for this money for, to, to Stephanie Clifford for her not to speak about what allegedly may have happened. So I guess that's the theory. All right, that would, okay, all right. Now, um, if there's a sealed indictment, as a courtesy, when you're a foreign prosecutor, do you make a phone call to the, uh, to the defendant's uh, lawyer and say, do you want to surrender? I mean, what's, what's the, what's the cur is there professional courtesy or bad blood when you don't do that? You know, I mean, <laughs> under normal circumstances, I would say there's some professional courtesy, uh, particularly when the uh, would-be defendant is a well-known person with well-known defense counsel. Um, but I just feel like at this point, courtesy and tradition are kind of out the window. 
So, uh, and with Donald Trump sort of preemptively saying several weeks ago, uh, predicting that he would be charged, um, and the complexity of his having Secret Service protection, um, I think my guess is through gritted teeth, the DA's office up in New York will have to contact the Secret Service, probably starting with the Secret Service office in New York City to arrange some kind of a, a surrender process. This is far from a normal case. <laughs> Indeed, it is far from the normal case. Thank you very much.